Hello everyone, uh, thank you for coming to my talk. I'm Galen Wang. I'm currently working at the Center for Computational Sciences and Engineering in Computational Research Division. Since I just joined the lab last November, today I will mainly talk about my PhD work on modeling non-equilibrium phase transitions in complex fluids, which motivated me to join CCSE and possibly to improve my model in using frameworks like AMREX. Let's start with some background. Complex fluids can be found everywhere in natural and, and, and engineered materials. How complex are they? They are distinct from simple fluids, which flow continuously under shear and cannot hold a shape, and different from elastic solids, which spring back with perfect memory. Complex fluids are useful precisely because they exhibit both these types of behaviors. For example, shaving foam sits on your hand like a solid, but spreads like a liquid between, when you rub it between your hands. The reason for this behavior is that complex fluids have an uh, internal microstructure formed by the presence of a second non-continuum phase dispersed in a suspending continuum phase. These can be solid and liquid uh, suspensions such as paint, uh, liquid and liquid emulsions such as salad dressing, or air in liquid foams. My research focuses on colloidal suspensions. They are microscopic solid particles suspended in a, a solvent. They are so small that they undergo Brownian motion and diffuse in the solvent. Understanding phase transitions of complex fluids is a key step to understand these applications. Here is an example of an industrial coating process which involves phase transitions. A coating blade drags the coating along a surface. The coating is a solvent suspending colloid. In the region behind the blade is the dilute coating as manufactured. It has to be liquid-like, so it can be spread. Some of the solvent is swept out by the blade, leaving a denser uh, liquid suspension. Uh, the thin layer left behind evaporates, densifying into a solid phase. It is uh, important to understand this phase transition as we want to control the quality of the coating. Phase transitions can be described by a phase diagram. Corridor phases are set by surface property and concentration. Corridor surfaces determine their interaction, which can range from purely repulsive to strongly attractive, shown on the vertical axis here, where KBT is uh, the thermal energy and V0 is the depth of the interparticle potential. On, yeah, on the other hand, the volume fraction is the, the dimensionless concentration of particles, and it, it can range from dilute uh, to densely packed. A here is the particle radius, and N is the particle number density. Today I will focus on this region, purely repulsive hard spheres uh, undergoing liquid to solid transition as a function of volume fraction. Note that a system can form either a crystal or glass as it solidifies. Thermodynamically, crystalline state is favored as it has a lower free energy, but the rate of change of volume fraction is the key to determine the fate of the system. If the rate is low, particles have enough time to relax to their lowest free energy state, but if the rate is high, particle relaxation can be hindered and the system gets stuck in the amorphous structure and the glass forms. This is non-equilibrium, this is the non-equilibrium phase transition called vitrification, or sometimes called a glass transition. Vitrification emerges naturally in many applications. Industrial coating I showed earlier is a perfect example. In addition, frozen food is actually in a glassy state without completely altering its original condition. And the bacteria form uh, glasses in their cytoplasm as a survival strategy in extreme environment. A mechanistic view of vitrification will help us better design non-equilibrium materials and deepen our understanding of some biological processes. However, so far, no satisfying mechanistic model is available and the description of vitrification is at best phenomenological. For instance, we know that by definition, glasses are uh, amorphous solids with a liquid-like structure. We know that glasses has, have large viscosities, indicating the dynamics are slow. Recent studies have uh, also, find, also found that dynamics are heterogeneous, meaning that the velocity of, velo velocity of molecules in, gla in glasses does not follow um, classical uh, Boltzmann distribution, and there are small groups of particles that move at a higher speed. 
and the glasses are out of equilibrium and exhibit aging, meaning that they take extremely long times to equilibrate. In fact, the most glassy materials are functioning under such non-equilibrium condition and may not reach equilibrium within the lifetime of the universe. These phenomenologies indeed present challenges to reveal uh, the micro-mechanical origin behind them. First, we wish to capture the fast-moving groups of particles, which requires a small lens and time scales. And we also wish to capture the long-time relaxation behavior, which requires a large time scale as well. Second, the out-of-equilibrium nature of glasses cannot be described by equilibrium thermodynamic theories, and the new models are required. Dynamic simulation is a powerful tool to access these lens and time scales, and can provide insight into a new mechanistic view. In this project, we developed a new particle size quench method in lamps. This method is uh, motivated by the, experiment, uh, it, the, by the experiments conducted by my former collaborators, where they use pili pan microgel particles to trigger the glass transition by a jump in particle sizes at fixed system volume. One interesting feature of such particles is that they swell upon cooling and shrink upon heating. In our model, we constructed many particles in a Newtonian solvent. Each of them is able to shrink to or grow its size with, uh, with a controlled rate. They do so in a fixed simulation box. We further assume that the particles grow their sizes by absorbing fluid, giving minimum disturbance to the surrounding fluid. We build a system of freely draining, nearly hard Brownian colloidal spheres. Their motion is governed by the Langevin equation, which is a stochastic momentum balance equation. There are three contributions to the force on each particle, namely hydrodynamic force, Brownian force, and uh, interparticle force. The freely draining limit neglects many body hydrodynamic interactions, which is a reasonable approximation when the repulsion range between particles keeps their no slip surfaces separated by at least 20% of their particle sizes. Then the hydrodynamic force is simplified to the Stokes drag law, describing uh, the, lo the, the drag force acting on a single particle moving in the fluid. Here, Ai is the uh, radius of particle I, Ui, big Ui is the particle velocity, and U infinity is uh, the fluid velocity. Brownian force can be derived from uh, Brown, uh, classical Brownian statistics. Interparticle force can, uh, is defined by the derivative of interparticle potential V. Here, here, are, here is a list of uh, simulation parameters. Every parameter is non-dimensionalized uh, by the particle radius A, so it can be generalized to many real systems. We built a periodically replicated system of 55,000 freely draining Brownian spheres uh, in lamps. This number of particles gives good statistics on our measurements, and the further increase of uh, number of particles does not change the results. Here I also show a scalability plot uh, for this problem on Stampede 2 supercomputer. It did not scale too well as the performance deviates from linear scaling at small number of particles, a uh, small number of processors, possibly due to the expensive work that has to be done to construct the neighbor list in such concentrated system. That's part of the reason I want to join CCSE to see what improvement can be achieved maybe using uh, GPUs. The domain size is fixed at uh, 37A cubed, which gives a 50% volume fraction that I use as my initial volume fraction before the quench. There are five types of particles, each are slightly different, uh, each has a slightly different uh, radius, and each type has 11,000 particles. This size quality dispersity is used to suppress crystallization. A steep Morse potential cuts off its attractive part to model a nearly hard sphere system. We vary final volume fractions to uh, span from a dense liquid to deep into the gas. We also impose a fast quench rate. A squared over D, uh, which is the inverse of this term here, is the particle diffusive time, de uh, describing uh, the time for a single particle to diffuse uh, its radius. This rate guarantees that all quenches will finish within a fraction of the diffusive time. 
Here I show you a movie of the glass transition taking place in real time using particle size quench method from a liquid state at 50% to, uh, to dipping the glass at 63%. Uh, Each particle is colored by its number of contacts, which is defined in this cartoon here, and is tracked throughout the simulation so that we can visualize crowding. Red means few contacts and blue means many contacts. As we can see, the color becomes lighter as particles grow, grow their sizes to gain contacts. Eventually, in the final state at 63% volume fraction, the color overall becomes blue, meaning that uh, most particles have many contacts. We can zoom in to see the pronounced slowing down of particle dynamics as crowding hinders motion. In simulations, we can monitor particle positions with very high resolution, uh, as well as the particle velocities and the particle stresses and we will connect those quantities to a mechanistic picture of vitrification. We first explore dynamics by measuring mean square displacement for dense liquids on the left and the uh, uh, glassy system on the right. Note that for non-equilibrium systems, there are two time scales. One is the wait time, indicating the time waited after the quench before the measurement starts, showing the legend. The other is the lag time, indicating the length of the measurement shown on the horizontal axis. Mean square displacement is a quantity characterizing diffusion. For a single particle undergoing Brownian motion in an unbound domain, mean square displacement grows linearly with time. We can clearly see that uh, uh, for dense liquids, there is no wait time dependence. Almost all curves overlap on top of each other almost instantaneously. However, for a, glassy system, uh, for a glassy system, mean square displacement are well separated, and it takes a very long time to uh, reach a steady state. To put things into context, for 200 nanometer particles suspended in water, 80,000 uh, diffusive time is about 13 minutes, which corresponds to billions of time steps in mass. We can imagine that with an even higher concentration, aging dynamics will be even more pronounced and the system will take even longer time to equilibrate. Our measurement on mean square displacement qualitatively recovers experimental results. Here I show uh, mean square displacement from our collaborator as a function of lag time at different wait times for an effective volume fraction of 40.2%. Uh, we observe a similar shift of the curves to the right and in the end, mean square displacement curves uh, overlap as a steady state is reached. Um, although it takes much longer time for experimental system to equilibrate, probably due to the softness of their particles. Having validated our model, we took a step forward to characterize the microstructure of a glassy material to explain why aging dynamics appear. Previous studies uh, have claimed that the structure of glasses is not interesting because they are just a denser liquid, and we found out that it's not true. We did a Voronoi diagram analysis to measure the vo void width between particles, and I put up a cartoon here to show uh, uh, what I measured. For a particle system, we first constructed Voronoi uh, planes uh, as a center planes between uh, particle pairs. Then the intersection of Voronoi planes gives the Voronoi edge, which is the line for which is the line farthest away uh, from the nearby particles. Then uh, void width is defined as the shortest distance from uh, the nearby uh, particle surface, indicated by this dash line here. Uh, here I show the void width distribution of a dense liquid on the left and for a uh, concentrated um, glassy system on the right. Um, for dense liquids, the uh, void width distribution is evolving towards a more single peaked distribution. Conceptually, this suggests a more homogeneous structure, as shown by the cartoon here. For example, if you look at the three red pro, pro particles here, their nearest neighbors are distributed almost evenly around them, and this happens with the majority of the other particles. In contrast, in contrast uh, for glassy systems, the bimodal feature is maintained during aging process, suggesting a heterogeneous structure where non-uniform uh, distribution of nearest neighbor particles generate those large defects. It is those uh, heterogeneous voids that gives particles extra room to relax, leading to aging behavior. 
The heterogeneous structure reviewed in this uh, in our study is naturally connected to osmotic pressure by definition. The osmotic pressure is defined as the minus one third of the trace of the particle stress tensor sigma p. In the freely draining limit, um, the relevant contribution to the uh, osmotic pressure is the pair contribution, where n is the particle number density, r is the center to center position vector, and the uh, fp is the interparticle force. Osmotic pressure measures the normal stress uh, the particle exerts on a fictitious wall enclosing them. Imagine there is a cluster of particles in the system and it creates a higher concentration relative to its surroundings. Thus, they want to push outward on the fictitious wall, the red dashed circle, exerting a positive osmotic pressure. We measure the osmotic pressure both right after the quench and the long time after the quench. Um, our long time osmotic pressure matches with several uh, uh, several studies from the literature, once again validating our model. On the right, I showed osmotic pressure overshoot delta p, which is the difference between the red and the blue curve, and also the uh, normalized delta p, which is normalized by the long time uh, osmotic pressure. Um, indeed, for volume fraction range around 60% where aging is pronounced, there is a drastic increase in osmotic pressure overshoot, but for ultra-dense uh, systems, the normalized uh, uh, delta pi drops significantly, suggesting that the driving force for aging is weak and the system is quite stable there. So osmotic pressure is identified as a driving force for glassy aging. To conclude, in this work, we developed a uh, framework to study non-equilibrium rigidification via a new particle size quench method. We recovered the glassy aging dynamics and discovered some new insights, such as that glassy materials exhibit, exhibit heterogeneous structures and that osmotic pressure overshoot serves as a driving force for glassy aging. In terms of outlook, the natural next step is to add hydrodynamic effect. This is the part that gets me excited and motivated me to join CCSE to use frameworks like AMRATS and fluctuating hydrodynamics. Hydrodynamic interaction is very important in many systems, especially in cells. Here is a video showing how the movement of a cell nucleus drags the particle behind it and creates flow that moves uh, other particles near the membrane to uh, move in the opposite direction. Such behavior was not captured in the previous uh, freely draining model. The second future direction can include more complicated um, uh, interparticle potential into the model. I already showed in this presentation that particles in experiments have polymer chains grafted to a hard core, which makes them substan substantially soft. In addition, um, we uh, adding attractions to particles will traverse another direction on the phase diagram by going up and down, which creates an intriguing network structure and forms a gel. Finally, uh, vitrification is closely related to volume fraction quench rate. With particle size quench model, we can trigger the colloidal glass transition with arbitrary quench rate and depths to see the effect that they have. With that, I'd like to thank uh, everyone for your attention and I'd like to take any questions you have. Thank you.